The Antelopes by F. C. Salas. In addition to the bushbucks and sedatungas, two more very notable spiral horned African antelopes remain to be mentioned, namely the greater kudu and the lesser kudu. The greater kudu is one of the most magnificent looking of the whole family of antelopes, and is an animal of large size, an adult male standing 4 feet 9 inches and upwards at the withers. The general color of this species is light brown to dark gray, the old males looking much darker than females or younger animals, because the scantiness of their coats shows the dark color of the skin beneath. On each side of the body and hindquarters there are several white stripes, which vary in number from 4 to 8 or 9. As in all this group of antelopes, there are two or three cheek spots, as well as an arrow-shaped white mark across the nose, below the eyes. In the male, there is a slight mane on the back of the neck, and a fringe of long white and blackish brown hair intermixed, extending from the throat to the chest. The ears are very large and rounded, and the male is adorned with magnificent spiral horns, which have been known to attain a length of 48 inches in a straight line from base to tip, and 64 inches over the curve. The greater kudu once had a very wide range, which extended from the central portions of the Cape Colony to Angola on the west, and on the east throughout East Africa up to Abyssinia. But, with the single exception of the buffalo, no species of wild animals suffered more from the terrible scourge of rinderpest, which recently swept over the continent than this lordly antelope, and it has almost ceased to exist in many districts of South and South Central Africa, where up to 1896 it was still very numerous. The greater kudu is a bush-loving antelope, and very partial to wooded hills, though it is also plentiful in the neighborhood of rivers which flow through level tracts of country, covered with forest and bush. In my own experience, it is never found at any great distance from water. It eats leaves and wild fruits as well as grass, and lives in small herds or families, never, I believe, congregating in large numbers. In southern Africa, at any rate, it was always exceptional to see more than 20 greater kudus together, and I have never seen more than 30. At certain seasons of the year, the males leave the females and live alone or several together. I once saw nine magnificently horned kudus standing on the bank of the Chobi, and I have often seen four or five males of this species consorting together. As a rule, the greater kudu is met with in hilly country or in bush so dense that a horse cannot gallop through it at full speed. But if met with in open ground, a good horse can overtake an old male without much difficulty. The females are much lighter and faster, and cannot be overtaken in any kind of ground. The greater kudu is one of the most timid and inoffensive of animals, and when attacked by dogs will not make the slightest attempt to defend itself, either with its horns or by kicking. The lesser kudu in general color nearly resembles its larger relative, but is much smaller, the males only standing about 40 inches at the withers, and it lacks the long fringe of hair under the throat. The white stripes on the body and hindquarters are, however, more numerous. From 11 to 14, and the horns, which are only present in the males, are less divergent, and with the spiral curvature much closer than in the greater kudu. The lesser kudu is an inhabitant of Somaliland and the maritime districts of British East Africa. It frequents thick scrubby jungle and is said to be exceedingly watchful and wary. It lives either in pairs or in small families, but never congregates in large herds. Like all the trigelophene antelopes, this species is a leaf eater and feeds principally during the night, lying up in thick bush during the heat of the day. There remains to be mentioned but one other group of antelopes, the elands, large, heavily built animals which belong to the present group, but differ from all species of kudu, sedatunga, and bushbuck, inasmuch as both sexes are horned. There are two forms of the common eland, namely, the gray variety of southwestern Africa, and the striped animal, which is found in the countries farther north and east. The two forms grade one into the other and are absolutely identical in their habits and mode of life, the differences between them being merely superficial. To the south of the 23rd parallel of south latitude, all elands are of uniform fawn color, except the old animals, which look dark gray, from the fact that the scantiness of their coats allows the dark color of the skin to show through the hair. Old males, when standing in the shade of a tree, appear to be of a deep blue gray in color and are known to the colonists of South Africa as blue bulls. In Rhodesia, Southeast Africa, and the countries to the north of the Zambezi, all the elands are bright chestnut red when young, with a black line down the center of the back from the withers to the tail, 
broad black patches on the backs of the forelegs above the knees, and eight or nine white stripes on each side. When they grow old, the ruddiness of the ground color gradually fades, the black markings on the forelegs die out, and the white stripes become indistinguishable at a short distance, the old bulls looking deep blue-gray in general color. Every intermediate stage of coloring between the unstriped and the highly colored forms of Eland is to be found in the district lying between the central portions of the Kalahari Desert and the Zambezi River. Old male Eland south of the Zambezi develop a growth of long, bristly back hair on the forehead, which often hangs over their eyes and extends halfway down their noses. North of the Zambezi, this growth of hair is not nearly so luxuriant. I have carefully measured the standing height at the withers of many old male Elands in the interior of South Africa and found that it varied from 5 feet 8 inches to 5 feet 10 inches. The horns of bulls in their prime measure from 26 inches to 33 inches in length, but old bulls wear their horns down very much. The cows carry longer, though thinner, horns than the bulls. The range of the Elan once extended from Cape Agulhas to the White Nile, but it has become extinct in many districts of southern Africa, and in almost every other portion of its range has, like all other Tragilophene antelopes, suffered so cruelly from the recent visitation of Rinderpest that it has now become a scarce animal all over Africa. During the rainy season, elands are usually met with in small herds of from four or five to ten individuals, but towards the end of the dry season, they collect into large herds, and at such times I have often seen from fifty to over two hundred of these animals in one troop. In my experience, elands live for two-thirds of the year in forest or bush-covered country or amongst rugged hills, and in such localities they are difficult to overtake on horseback. But, in the middle of the dry season, as soon as they smell the smoke of the grass fires lighted by the natives on the open plateau, they leave their retreats and, collecting in herds, wander out onto the treeless plains in search of young grass. They then fall an easy prey to a mounted hunter, especially the heavy old bulls, which can be run to a standstill with ease by a very moderate horse. The flesh of the eland is excellent when the animal is in good condition, as at such time these animals become very fat especially the old bulls, whose hearts become encased in a mass of fat which will often weigh 20 pounds. It is a mistake, however, to think that eland meat is always good, for towards the end of the dry season, when there is little grass to be got, they feed extensively on the leaves of certain bushes, and their meat at such times becomes very poor and tasteless. Besides the common eland of southern, central, and eastern Africa, another distinct species is met with in Senegal and the Gambia colony. This is the Derby and eland, about which animal our knowledge is still very slight, as I believe that it has never yet been shot nor its habits studied by a European traveler. A good many skulls and horns and a few skins have been obtained from natives, from which it appears that in general color this species is of a rich reddish fawn color, becoming nearly white below, the middle of the belly being black. The neck is covered with long hair of a dark brown or black color, blacker towards the shoulder than in front. A broad black stripe extends all down the center of the back from the neck to the root of the tail, and there are large black patches on the backs and inner sides of the forelegs above the knees. On each side of the body and haunches there are 13 or 14 narrow white stripes. The horns are larger and more massive and divergent than in the common eland. The Derbian eland is said to be a forest-loving animal, never of its own accord coming out into the plains. It lives in small herds is very shy and not at all abundant, and browses on the leaves and young shoots of various trees and bushes. End of section 48. Recording by Anthony Viola.